and welcome to Comfish Alaska 2022. We'd like to thank our forum sponsors, Highmark Marine Fabrication and North Rim Bank. As you may know, this year we are doing our forums in a hybrid manner. At the end of the presentation, we will have a short Q&A session. For those of you online, please send in your questions via the Q&A box and we will gather your questions along with those in the room. So this is the State of Alaska legislative update from Representative Louise Stutes and Senator Gary Stevens. Um, Representative Louise Stutes is in her fourth term representing House District 32. She is presently the Speaker of the House, has co-chaired the House Transportation Committee for two years or two terms and is former chair of the House Special Committee on Fisheries for three terms. Prior to her current state role, Louise served six years on the Kodiak Island Assembly and Louise was also a su successful business owner for 25 years. Louise maintains her home in Kodiak with her husband Stormy Stutes who is a retired fisherman. Together they enjoy their four children and six grandchildren. I'm jealous, I only have one grandchild. <laughs> <clears throat> Kodiak Senator Gary Stevens <clears throat> sorry, served for four years as president of the Alaska State Senate and was the national chairman of the Council of State Governments in 2013. 2022 is his 22nd year as a legislator and his 20th in the Alaska State Senate. Currently, Senator Stevens serves in a majority leadership position as chair of the Senate Rules Committee and Senate Special Committee on World Trade. He is also a member of uh, Senate Education, Labor and Commerce and Resource Committees. Before his election to the legislature, Senator Stevens served for many years in Kodiak. He received his PhD from the University of Oregon and served as an Army Intelligent Officer. So I will now turn over the podium to Senator Stevens. Well, thank you. This is overwhelming. Good to see all of you. It's great to be here. I, I got in yesterday and I on all that snow and I thought, oh man, this is going to be a terrible weather. And then the, today it just turned beautiful. Louise, you're miss missing some beautiful weather here in Kodak. It's, the sun is shining. Oh, I know it. So Louise, uh, Louise, of course, is uh, Speaker of the House, and uh, she told me uh, she, she can't make it. She's got a very squirrely house she has to deal with. So she said, you go ahead and speak for me. So I was planning on it, and then now I see she's here to make sure I tell the truth. So, but Louise and I have worked together for many years, and it's just been a great partnership. And I can't, I can't think of anything that we've really disagreed on. So maybe to bring you up to speed, uh, first, let's, I think we need to acknowledge that Don Young's passing is really significant. I mean, he was always there for us. We had conducted him any time. He had a great sense of humor. I'll just tell you one story. He, uh, when, um, when the folks broke into the Capitol, you know, on, uh, in January, he was in his office. He refused to leave. Everyone else went to safe place in the basement. He was sitting at his desk. He said, with a 45 on his desk, a knife in his boot, and he said, bring him on. <laughs> so... If, you, if you've ever been in his office, you know that uh, you walk in there and there's about 25 heads on the wall of various animals he's killed. So if you were uh, one of these guys that broke into the building and you broke into his office, you'd think, oh my God, my head is going to be up there next. So Don was just great. He did wonderful things for us, really supportive of fisheries issues. So uh, we are now uh, about six weeks away from concluding. Things are going along really well. Um, the budget is moving ahead. The House deals with the um, operating budget. We're dealing with a capital budget. We expect to have that fairly soon from the House. Now, things are going well. Um, oil is up. That's oil goes up, it goes down, but it is up right now. And, um, and uh, maybe it's down slightly, but that makes a big impact on us. And the permanent fund itself is doing really well. Now, you should realize the fund, I just heard this yesterday from a friend, the uh, Alaska Permanent Fund is the biggest fund on the planet per capita. Important to know that. The per capita, you know, Norway's is bigger, but per capita, ours is much bigger. So it has a tremendous impact on us in the future. It's, there, it's having an impact right now. Some two thirds of our budget comes from the 5% uh, that we take out of the permanent fund. It's just really crucial. And uh, so realize that we're in pretty good shape. We've got a long ways to go. Uh, a lot of issues yet we have to deal with. Um, I think the permanent fund dividend is one that people always ask about. You know, uh, I believe that we're going to wind up. The House is uh, taking a, a step forward on this, on uh, on doing not only a permanent fund dividend, maybe around $1,100, something like that, but in addition, uh, an energy rebate, because we are in good shape. 
and we can afford to do a, a reasonable rebate, not what the governor's asking. What the governor's asking would just overdraw the permanent fund and destroy it in the future. We need, we need to keep that growing. We need to make sure that it's there for our kids and our grandkids. So a lot of things going on. Um, the uh, Let's see, I might mention the, I have a bill that I, I think is really important and we've been working on it. It's now in the House, moved through the Senate in the House um, and it's um, Senate Bill 33. And what it does, it's, um, it, it allows um, a tax rebate to processors who uh, do innovative processing, who add new equipment, it helps pay for that equipment and, uh, and really raises the value of, of the product that they're producing. In the past, we did this for salmon in, in 2002, 2003, something like that. And it really worked in Bristol Bay. It raised the price, the value of, of that fish, not only to the processors, but to the fishermen themselves. And it really has worked well. Well, it, it ran out. So this bill would uh, reinstate it and then also add Pollock cod and black cod. So I think it has a potential of, of really adding value to our seafood product. And it, it's done that in salmon in the past. I think it'll do it for Pollock and cod in the future. Well, I'm having trouble reading my notes here, but um, so I wanted to mention that, but um, uh, uh, we've got some elections issues coming on that are really important to try to um, control uh, our, control the elections. You know, we, when I was first elected in 2000, about 2002, um, three, um, uh, three, maybe even five uh, uh, representatives got in trouble by uh, selling their vote to big oil. You remember those days? It was terrible. And, uh, and to me, coming from the academic world, from the college, uh, to suddenly find myself uh, in a place where people were selling their votes was quite shocking. It's not what I expected to find. So in the end, uh, three of them went to prison. So I think this issue of making sure that corruption stays out of our elections is really important. There is a House bill. I don't remember the number of it. I'm sure Louise can tell us that it's working its way through the House. And, uh, and what it will do is it sets a, a certain dollar amount, like $2,000 is the most that anyone can give to any legislator running in, in the two-year period. Um, and uh, so it puts some limits on it, which I think is good. It's always worked in the past. I've always had to work under those uh, conditions in the past. As you know, um, we now are at this next election, we'll be dealing with what's called ranked choice voting. We've never had that before. I had someone call me from Kodiak and say, you idiots, how could the legislature be so stupid as to pass ranked cho choice voting? And I had to explain to them, we didn't do that. The voters did it in the last election. So if he was paying attention, he either voted for it or against it. But that's what we're going to be dealing with this next election. And also we'll probably be dealing with it, I think, in the special election for Don Young's temporary rep replacement. And then there will be, uh, so that will be in maybe June, I believe. And then the, the, the primary for the temporary election. And then August for the, for the temporary permanent election, but then that person will only serve it to the end of the year. And after that, there will be in August and in November, an election for somebody permanently to fill Don Young's seat. So I'm really concerned about it because whoever that is, uh, is going to be somebody without a lot of, uh, a lot of experience, a, a, a lot of credibility, a, a, a lot of seniority like Don had. And um, he's, he, that's the only person we have in Congress and in the House. So it's going to be really Difficult, and I hope we get the right person there. I think it'll probably be, I'll, I'll bet, I wouldn't be surprised there are 10 or 12 people running. Uh, but I want to make sure we, we want to make sure we, we elect someone who's youngish and can be there for a long time to build up that seniority. When you have only one representative, you want to make sure that, um, that they're there in, in good shape and doing good things for us. So I think that covers mostly what I wanted to say. And um, I'll turn it over to my friend, Louise Stutes, Representative Stutes. Hey. Thank you. Yeah, I, I certainly do wish I was there, but it's nice that they have this virtual situation so I can attend virtually anyway. I, I really was intending on coming, but uh, I got this rotten cold, managed to uh, uh, avoid getting the COVID, but I got the cold and I thought, hey, I better not fly. We've got the budget on the floor this next week because um, House Finance passed out the the operating budget yesterday. So next week's going to be a busy week down here. And I want to make sure that I'm there to get my, to uh, make sure uh, I get my two cents worth. So since the budget did, did pass out of the house yesterday, I'll go over a few things and then I'll touch on a couple of fishery issues as well. Um, the finance committee took some amendments. Some of them were okay. Some of them were not okay. 
I'll tell you the good thing is we got an additional $27 million in for um, fuel to offset some of the high fuel costs, which is gonna be really a good thing for the Marine Highway. And it's also gonna be a really good thing for the Department of Fish and Game. Um, in addition to this, the House majority has agreed that we will have a $1,300 energy relief payment. And this will be on top of the PFD. The PFD formula or the PFD amount hasn't been determined as of yet. And when we, I think it's going to be a separate issue. I don't think you'll see it in the operating budget. You never can tell though. Um, but we just don't have a, a figure on that. Uh, right now, there's not a lot of consensus. I think that the Senate's kind of looking at one number and the House is kind of looking at another number. I can tell you um, firmly that the House is not willing to overdraw the POMV in order to give out a larger PFD, one. And two, the House also, is, the majority is um, pretty insistent in starting to rebuild our savings that we've spent over the last seven or eight years. That's, that's really important to us. We've also kind of um, framed ourselves as the education um, caucus. We understand that we clearly need to address um, our education, whether it be K through 12, pre-K, or the university, we the BSA is a situation that we were looking at increasing. It doesn't sound like, from what I've heard, that there's much interest on behalf of the Senate to increase the BSA. We're still working with them on it. Right now, there's a um, fifty million dollar one-time funding that has passed, but. What concerns me about that is a one-time funding doesn't give our schools much security. It, it's great this year, but next year you've got a hole in the budget again. I do believe there, the good news though, is I do believe there's a consensus between both the House and the Senate to forward fund our education. So that will help and that will help with our teacher retention and not having to be threatened with a pink slip every year. Um, let's see, I'm really, really concerned about the adoption of the amendment yesterday in um, House Finance for almost $5 million for primacy on 404 wetland permitting. It, it really is, the, it currently is under the purview of the EPA. And this is, this is clearly an effort for our state to um, fast track the Bristol Bay um, pebble mine situation. When asked in committee if, um, if passing this bill, giving the state primacy would um, allow the state to move forward with the pebble mine um, situation, Jason Bruni was very reluctant to answer the or answer the question, and when he was finally pressed on it by uh, Representative Ortez, he said, "Oh yeah, it will definitely make it a lot easier, and it will in, enable the state to move forward." So, hopefully, the Senate will help us out with that. I, I just, um, it, it's really. It's very disconcerting to me, to say the least. Now we'll go to the positive note. The governor had taken out all the state funds for the marine highway system and replaced them with federal dollars. Well, the problem with that is at the end of five years when there's no more federal dollars, from my perspective, there's no more marine highway either. And so we were able to, I was able to get an amendment in for $60 million and we have $60 million of state dollars that are in the budget. And we have created a, um, 
a um, receptacle, for lack of better terms, that will be non-sweepable by the governor that will receive these funds. And not only will they will receive those funds, but while these federal dollars are coming in, thank you, Lisa Murkowski, the Alaska Marine Highway System is guaranteed $200 million a year for five years. And it can be used for the new ferries, it can be used for operations, and it can be used for repairs. She really did as well. So in the meantime, we will also collect all the fare box receipts and put them in this non-sweepable fund. So at the end of five years, if in fact these um, federal dollars that have been allocated are not reallocated, we will have money and we can move forward with the marine highway system. And we should by that time have um, the Tustamina almost online and one or two more vessels in the works. We have a great new um, commissioner of DOT who loves the marine highway. And I just love this guy. He, he is our friend. So I, I am really excited about that. That's a, that's a good thing. The um, exemption for the CFEC licensed vessels to register at DMV and CFE is currently in Senate finance. It's gone all the way through the House. And I'm hoping that it will get out of Senate finance and get voted on. And all it says, it's a very simple bill. It says if your vessel is registered with CFEC, you do not have to go to DMV and re-register it. And I've been able to work with the Department of Public Safety. So there should have been no um, citations issued if you are not dual, duly registered this year. If you don't have a CFEC permit, then you, you need to go to the DMV and get um, the permit. Um, we have a fisheries development association bill, which allows developing fisheries to self assess a tax for surveys. It's in house rules. And I think there's a good shot that it'll make it this year. It's for new developing fisheries. So they don't have to go to the department of fish and game to um, get ask for dough for their surveys. They can raise it from within and when they um, have satisfied all the needs, they have the ability to regulate their own fees and so they can reduce them again too, which is really gonna be a pretty neat deal. Um, we've done really well at making sure that the Department of Fish and Game has been fully funded. We worked hard on that this year and um, I feel pretty good about the funding that has come through and, and we've had lots of support in the, especially in the House in that regard. The conflict of interest legislation, which we've all been listening to for what, about 15 years now, our only adversary, the only adversary we have or opponent to this bill is Kenai River um, Sports Association. And for some reason, they think it's going to give commercial fishermen an advantage over sport fishermen when in all actuality, it just levels the playing field. Now I've been working with Josh Revac who has it in uh, resources in the Senate where it's died the last two times. And I have my fingers crossed that we make it out of there and finally get that um, into, into law. That would sure, certainly be uh, a feather in our cap if we could get that going. Um, let's see, I spoke to you a little bit about the, um, the um, bill that we have going with the um, Marine Highway. And uh, let's see what else I have. I have information, I won't go into it too much, but uh, briefly on the incoming fisheries relief, everybody's always interested in money. Um, Alaska's ARPA Small Business Grant Program has reopened for round two with $34 million of $90 million yet to be allocated. Here's the thing. Uh, if you receive it, the round two application is open through 
5 p.m. April 15th. And if you don't get it in by 5 p.m. April 15th, don't plan on turning it in because they don't seem to be very flexible. And the other caveat to that is if you received a grant from round one, you are not eligible for round two. And you can go to the DCCED uh, website for the details of applications on this. And if you have any trouble, you can always call Matt Greening, my chief of staff, who is also a fisherman and he's pretty uh, up to date on this. The 2018 PCOD payments went out to skippers earlier this month. Um, let's see. Crew members had to have their, app oh, they have to have their applications, if you're a crew member, postmarked by next Thursday, March 31st, in order to be considered for relief payments. So pass that out. Um, if you don't have an application, go to Pacific States Marine Fisheries Commission, Commission website and fill it out. Um, let's see. Ugh. Pacific States. They're just a pain in mind, you know what? They are just the most difficult to deal with. And I don't know why we keep having to deal with them. Of all the people that get their um, distribution checks from these disasters, Alaska is always at the bottom of the list, even after like Puerto Rico and everybody else, because we have to deal with those buggers. Um, so, we're working on them. We're staying on their tail, and that's just the best we can do. Um, insofar as I heard uh, this good senator speak about a term, a, a um, APOC limit bill, we passed one through the House. It passed through the House, and it's headed to the Senate. And what it did is it limits, right now, if you are running for a state office, your campaign limit is $500 per year. And the bill that we just passed, and then, then that got struck down and there was no limits. You could, somebody could send me a check for a million bucks and I'm in like Flynn. And so um, that didn't set well with most of us as legislators. That's not the idea to buy your way in. And so we passed a bill and it's, a $2,000 maximum, but it's a $2,000 maximum per campaign. So for the house, it would be $2,000 for the two year period that I would be in or equivalently $1,000 a year. Um, and that did pass. We, we got it through barely, but we got it through. We had a lot of people that just felt like their um, freedom of speech was being violated by having a term, uh, a financial limit, you know, whatever. And then we also are carrying uh, my office, or I am carrying the compa companion bill to the senators on, um, our house bill is uh, 188 and it's just getting ready to go to the floor. And I've got bipartisan support on that, which I'm really happy about. And that is the bill that allows for um, credits for the sable fish, the pollock and cod for the, um, and that's really gonna be a, that's a good bill. And so I was, I was really delighted to be able to carry it on the house side. So, and I'm expecting that to pass and oh my God, I've been speaking for how long? So I'm gonna shut up and give you guys a chance. And also uh, Matt's online. So if, if anybody has any questions for Matt, he's available with us too. Yeah, thank, thank you, Louise. So maybe uh, we we'll take some questions here if you have them, but just a couple issues. One is the testy, just so you know, the replacement of the testy, uh, uh, it will be 40% more in terms of uh, cars and passengers it can carry. The cost is $250 million. It'd be mostly federal funds. And uh, they've already, they're already sending out now for, uh, for bids to, to get that done. The other issue that, um, that neither one of us mentioned is the problem we're having with the federal government on all of the monies. I mean, enormous amounts of money coming to Alaska and every other state. And we're having trouble finding out uh, what the rules are. Uh, 
both Louise and I have met several times with the governor's staff. It's really their responsibility to write the bill so we can start getting those monies out. He only has one person doing that. He needs to have a whole staff of people putting that together because enormous amounts of money coming in over the next five years. It'll make a tremendous, tremendous difference here in Alaska. So uh, we're waiting to get the, to get the word uh, from the governor on his bill, but also from the federal government on how those monies can be used and, and what we have to do to apply from. Uh, much of it is grant funds uh, that uh, various organizations can apply for. And I'm hoping that once we find out those rules that several Kodiak organizations will be applying for money. So at this point, oh, then any, any questions? Uh, let Louise. me go over one more thing that I forgot. Just one more thing. And that is, I know it's something that everybody's interested in, and that is our Board of Fish applicants. I just spoke to the administration this morning. Um, I'm pretty confident that we're gonna get some good calm fish representation. Um, I'm, I'm really hopeful. I think that uh, we met as a coastal, uh, coastal legislators in the house and we were able to get, I was able to get full support for Tom Carpenter. So I'm, I'm very hopeful. Tom Carpenter is a good guy out of Cordova, well-respected. And then we've got, I, we put in three or four other names. Anyway, I just want to throw that in. And I should, I was assured that I would be notified as soon as the decision was made prior to them making it public. So I'll let the appropriate people know when I hear. You know, I think Cody has done a good job of working between sports fisheries and commercial fisheries. Uh, but the problem we're facing now often, as, you, as Louise said, is, is the, fit, the, the sports fishery industry. And we want to make sure we work together. We want to make sure we've got some representation on that board and some, um, and some fishermen on that board. So that's a very important issue. I, any questions anybody has in between Louise and I, we'll, we'll try to answer them. And do we have a, a couple of minutes? Okay. Yes, sir. Terry. Thanks. Thanks very much for being here, you guys. Um, I have two quick questions, if you don't mind. Uh, the first is we had a terrific presentation from the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute earlier, and it was pointed out that they are not allowed by statute to promote mariculture products. Um, is there a statutory fix for that that might be possible during this session? And my second question is, um, after you do get your operating budget done, uh, the hope is you might be working on a capital budget. Is there possibly some money in the capital budget for a reasonable, let's say, public safety infrastructure project? So let's see, to answer the second one, uh, and, uh, the uh, yes, we are the Senate works on the operating budget. We're in the midst of doing that. And I said a lot of money coming in, a lot of it will be federal monies. Um, a lot of things will be accomplished. Uh, we want to get down the uh, school's construction list uh, uh, as far as we can. Uh, we always, what we do, we put as much money as we can and go down that list. It's, it, we don't control that list. The department does. But it'd be nice to get through all of that list, if at all possible. Also, the university has a very long list of capital construction, uh, not, not new projects, but replacement of roofs and that sort of thing. So uh, public safety... Um, you know, there's a lot of issues out there we've been talking about, uh, but I'm not sure there's an answer to that. Louise, you have anything going on in the house on um, on uh, the first question about not promoting oh, mariculture? Yes, I, I can answer that easily. Um, we certainly support it. There's not a bill in as of yet, and I would be very surprised to see anything get through this year. Um, very possibly if we had a committee bill, because there's no more personal legislation. Um, I know that it would get through next year. I feel confident in saying that we wouldn't have any problem getting it through um, next year, because the governor is fully in support of mariculture. He has a pro in his budget. He has allocated funds for, maricul for mariculture, and we are becoming a um, you know, the, one of the hot spots in the United States for our mariculture and our advanced thinking. And so, Terry, I think that there won't be any problem in um, it, but it has to be done via a bill. And Louise is right. Uh, now is a pretty uh, 
unlikely anything introduced now will make it through the next six weeks. Uh, and in fact, a lot of things that were introduced at the beginning of this year probably will not make it through. As you know, a lot of bills are introduced, not many make it in the end. Um, you, you ask about, uh, Terry, about, um, you were asking about uh, public safety. I'm, I'm not sure, what did, you, what did you mean by that? I was thinking maybe of a place where you might park fire trucks. <laughs> oh yeah, I see what you're getting at. I, I, my, my, my mind slipped there. That's uh, usually what you start with is uh, is a new fire hall. So you got our support entirely. Uh, Don Young put some money in the federal budget. Uh, I know there's more money is needed, and we're going to do our best to make sure that uh, the funds are there from the state, so we do get a new fire hall. It's it's at the top of everyone's list. Any comments on fire halls, Louise? Um, no, but I will say this. I don't know if there's any. Um... It's our number one priority in the capital budget, and we've been the a lot of the um, House members have actually been to Kodiak, seen the fire hall, recognize the shape it's in. And the second thing I will say is I don't know if there's anybody th there participating in the room, but please, if you see anybody that's involved in mariculture there at the Comfish, let them know that there is a a uh, $25 million grant program, particularly addressed to mariculture that's available. Okay, I see we're at 2.30. Do we have any time left? Or we... Okay, one more question. Well, I just wondered what rank, if I'm using the right pronunciation, rank choice, what does that mean? And then uh, what's the deadline on replacing Don Young and uh, the 1300 energy payment, when is that supposed to be? Okay, well, I'll start on that and uh, Louise can, can, can jump in. So a rank choice was again passed by the voters, uh, nothing that we came up with. And what it means is that, uh, let's just look at the, uh, at the normal August primary, uh, November general election coming up where both Louise and I will be running and, uh, and as well as the governor will be running. Um, so actually it's a very odd year because everyone in the house has to run, 19 to 20 senators have to run because of the, the redistricting issue. So um, what it means is that uh, there will not be a Republican primary. We've always had that in the past, a Republican primary. Now, that will not occur. Everyone who runs, who wants to run, will, will run in that August primary. And um, what will happen then is that they go to the general and uh, we have a chance to vote on, on those folks. The top four, uh, if nobody has a 50% plus one, the bottom one drops off and they recalculate it. So it doesn't go back to the voters. It's all done mechanically or through computers. And if that second vote doesn't work, you go to the third and the fourth vote. So it's a, it's a complex system. Again, not, not our choice, but it came from uh, Maine, it does it that way. As for the, um, the House seat, Don Young, um, I believe it's been set, Louise, for, uh, is it, do I have that right? Uh, the, in June, is that right? June 1? June 11th will be oh, the June primary, 11th. and yeah. it will be done by mail-in ballot. Right. So June 11th, you'll all get a ballot in the mail. You get to vote on that primary. And then it goes again. Ranked choice goes to the general to the next election, which happens to be in August. And so during our primary, it will be his general, the general for Don Young's seat. Yeah. So uh, the question was uh, that was asked, uh, when does he take uh, or would he or she take uh, take that position to be in August after the primary, that person will then serve from August through the end of Don Young's term, which I believe is December. And then uh, we'll have the August and November general election. And out of that will come whoever's going to be Don's replacement permanently. So it could be the same person. It could not be the same person. You think you're confused. <laughs> we have all been confused about this. No, no, that's no, no longer true. Uh, what happened, of course, was uh, Governor Murkowski appointed his daughter many years ago, and people were so upset about that. And, and of course, she's been the best Murkowski ever. But anyway, all upset about that. So the rules were changed. And uh, now the governor does not appoint um, any replacement for the House or the Senate.
Yeah. So that's all changed. So now there has to be an election. And it really concerns me because uh, it's just going to be very confusing. A dozen people running and we'll see who survives. And then they only serve for a short period of time until they're replaced by the permanent representative. It, um, any any comments on, on that, Louise? I think we've. No, I think you got it pretty out. well. And insofar as the um, energy relief check that can go out. Has that been through the Senate yet? Gary? No, 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 it has not. But uh, House is taking the lead on that. I think uh, yep. everyone I know is very supportive of what your plans are. Once it passes both bodies and the governor signs it, then it can go out at the governor's discretion. But I am somewhat under the impression it may go out the same time as the PFD. But the governor has the um, the governor has the option of when it could go out. The best guess is that uh, it'll just be one check because of the expense of running two checks for everyone. So probably be one check. And I just hope people keep in mind that half of that check or whatever, $1,100 will be the permanent fund dividend that, that we're getting. And the other half will be the energy uh, rebate. So it'll probably be just be one check and it'll be uh, 20, 2200, something around, around there. So uh, we have yet to decide that the Senate hasn't received it yet, but I think it probably has a good chance of passing. But again, just remember that we, we've got to be very careful about overdrawing that permanent fund or it won't be there in the future when we need it. Hey, thanks so much. Thanks, Louise. Hey, thank you. And Gary, you're right. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're very lucky and our community is very lucky because, and I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again, it's nice when you can um, have a working relationship with your Senator and we both work for the good of the whole and mark my words and trust me when I say, we are somewhat unique in that capital, in that respect. That's, that's quite true. <laughs>